Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing Ride 4. We're going to be using the Aprilia RSV1000R, and we will be trying to start from the back of the grid in Sugo. So of course we'll pull over to one side, let the uh, other riders get past, and now it's time to chase them down. It's my, probably my favourite part of Ride 4, letting the AI get ahead. This carnage has already occurred! Oh my goodness. This race has literally just started, so why not wait for Anna Salgado and whoever the uh, other crasher was to get through? It uh, was Patrick Holmes, actually. So we'll let them get through. We ha now have a seven-second lead for the Suzanne Gobert, who's in first place, of course. And now it's time for us to chase them down, carve our way through the pack on this magnificent Aprilia RSV1000R. Now, we've seen the French Riviera battle, which was, of course, on this same motorcycle, with the same livery and the same suit, of course, and I love it. It's I absolutely adore this bike, so I'm so pleased to be using this again. Especially in the Millennium Cup, where a lot of the bikes were from the 2000s era, which of course that makes sense because it's called the Millennium Cup. And that was a DLC pack a couple of weeks ago. Of course we do have more DLC coming out soon. Next DLC pack, which is a paid DLC, it's one of the premium packs, and that is the Extreme Performance. It apparently has a couple of achievements, a few extra bikes and uh, a few events in the career mode, so I look forward to that. Of course I'll be giving full coverage and all the bikes on that one as well. But I must say, the Millennium Cups one was probably one of my most favourite uh, DLC packs for Ride 4. We've had some pretty decent Ride 4 packs, to be honest with you. The DLC's been pretty good. And of course, the Extreme Performance one will probably be just as good. So I look forward to that. Fingers crossed uh, it'll be good. I'm sure it will be, though. We were almost in the slipstream there. We'll now uh, try and break on the... Oh, coming up on the inside. Breaking very late there. Didn't think I was going to get up the inside of Patrick Holmes, and we didn't. But give it time, a lap has passed and we have still not moved from 12th spot on the grid. So I am keen to see how we get on these next couple of laps. Of course they do break extremely early here, so I'll take advantage of that one as we flip it left for the hairpin curve. Anna Salgado ahead of us, waiting for that opportune moment to attack. And I think we found it as we run it a little bit wide, brilliantly done. Now get ahead of Anna Salgado on board the MV Augusta, a beautiful machine. I think it's the... Uh, Massimo Tamburini MV Augusta. Great choice of bike there for Anna Salgado, the Portuguese lady. Of course, we did a poll the other day, and at the point of this video, I actually haven't seen the results because it's still ongoing. But uh, we did a poll on the Ride 4 Legends and who is the greatest of all time out of the three said legends. Of course, we had Johnny Glamour, Bujang Bingana, and Carlos Pava Diaz. Now, some will say we have never seen Carlos Pava Diaz, Bujang Bingana, and Johnny Glamour on the same track. That's a lie. We have seen Johnny Glamour and Bujang together. But we've never seen Carlos Pava Diaz with those two other legends. So, are they the same person? Is Bujang also Carlos Pava Diaz? Is Johnny Glamour also Carlos Pava Diaz? Who knows? But as far as the voting went, because I do finally have the community tab on my uh, channel now, which I'm super pleased about. So far, it was looking like Johnny Glamour was taking uh, a second place behind Bujang Bingan, who was going to take it all, take the glory. And Carlos Pava Diaz didn't get as many votes as the others. As we now close up on Tiago Aguila, you know I'm going to be making that lunge into the hairpin curve again. We've got Serio Aki, Kazui Waki, Waki, whatever his name is, the Japanese riders ahead. We can make the same lunge here into the S-shaped curve. Beautifully done. I do like that change of direction. Now, I always have a special place in my heart for Sugo because this was one of the first tracks I did on Ride 4. And, of course, this is where I did the braking guide. So, if this track seems familiar. And, uh, yeah, that's where it's from. I, I did the braking guide. So, I'm very pleased. I think that video has just under 20,000 views now. So, I'm extremely pleased to be able to help some of the riders out and help other people with the games and help them with the braking and some other tutorials. It's uh, very, very enjoyable. It's a humbling experience. So as we dive up on the inside for the SP in for turn 9, beautifully done. Turn 10 coming up now for SP out. We can go round the outside here, then flick it up in the inside. That is classic racing. Classic Dr. Ace. Loving it so far. George Adams ahead of us. Just had to recorrect myself in that corner there. I felt like I was going a little bit wide as we all get very close to the MV Augusta there. Just forces him wide. Of course, the AI are a bit dramatic when you go anywhere near them. They like to pick it up. And uh, we open the inside of Eddie McDowell now. Didn't even see him for very long. We flew up in the inside. Braked extremely late for turn one. And very, very hard. Flick it right for the second corner. Still on the right-hand side of the tyre. Flick it to the left. Getting close to the apex. But don't touch the rumble strip on that one. It can be a little bit dangerous. 
as we fling it into the hairpin curve already. We're right on the rear of Mariko as as Aozora. God, they always catch me out, these ones. It's so difficult to say. I can get Suzanne Gobert pretty simple enough. As we dive up on the inside, that is another lunge for the H for the high point corner. Very, very nicely navigated. Now holding it right as oh, she looks like she slowed down in the corner there. Also, Suzanne Gobert. But I'm I'm a little bit worried actually now, guys, because it's two seconds lead for Yoko Fujikawa. And we haven't even made it past. Well, we have now, but we didn't at the time I was about to speak. We're now ahead of Suzanne Gobert and Yuko Fujikawa. It's 1.7 seconds up the road in this Sugo Grand Prix. So we're going to have to give everything we've got. Careful on the rumble strip there. I don't want to be sliding the rear on the rumble strip because it'll probably dip or bounce. And then it'll kick me off. We don't want that as we go into turn 11. Holding it right. Leaning on the right hand side of the tyre. Probably good to be having an asymmetric tyre here because uh, there's a lot more longer right handers than our lefts. So now push it forwards, pushing it, everything we've got, 1.2 seconds ahead up the road is Yoko Fujikawa. We're going to have to have a magnificent lap here if we want to catch him. Already two seconds quicker than our fastest lap, which I think was set in the previous lap, I'm not entirely sure. But Yoko Fujikawa is being hunted. But then again, we're going to close right in here onto the hairpin curve, surely. Yep, we certainly do. Wow, we've closed in a massive amount, so much so that it really threw me off. I was going to go right over the rumble strip. Can we flick it right now and take the lead? No, oh, close enough, but not quite. He's defending very well, Yoko Fujikawa, the Japanese rider. So I'm going to run it a little bit wider here to then get the exit so I can be able to point the Aprilia forward so we can get near the white line towards the rumble strip and then just push forwards, get into the slipstream of Fujikawa. We're not as close as I thought we would be. My little uh, lunge, which could have been going into the... Uh, the uh, chicane probably would have been a better idea, but we're running out of time here. Not sure where we're going to make the lunge. We can definitely get them on the straight if things come, you know, push comes to shove. But we're getting closer and closer as it goes. Coming out for SP out. If I carry enough speed here, I can then flick it right up on the inside. It's going to be a late lunge. Oh, contact! Contact made! Oh, Yoko Fujikawa, I think he's in the grass. Oh, my goodness. I don't. Oh, I think I knocked Yoko off. Yoko, oh no. Oh, remember Yoko Ono? He's been Moto 3. But <laughs> there we go. Another victory on board the Aprilia RSV 1000R. Yeah, a little bit of a scary one, that one. I do apologise to Yoko Fujikawa on that particular exchange. We now move across the globe and we're here in Italy for Monza. Still on board the Aprilia RSV 1000R. And away we go. I'm not going to mess around too much on this one. I want to try and get to the front and really go for it because I wanted to ask a question. Now, in these videos, I tend to hold back a lot and then wait for the AI to sort of get to the front and then try and make it exciting towards the end. Now, I do appreciate that sometimes you guys maybe want to just see me go for it and see where I can end up, see how far I can get ahead of the, the rest of the pack. Would you like to see more content of me sort of hanging back and waiting for the right moment to strike the AI or to just go for it and go absolutely gung-ho from the start. There's Corbin Cup contact made! Oh my god! Hearts in mouths moments as Rebecca Shino and uh, Dr. Ace collided before turn five there. My goodness! That was hearts in mouths stuff at the <laughs> as we go into Lesmo 1 for the very first time. Five laps Grand Prix here in Monza and the uh, magnificent spectacle of the Italian track. Lesmo 2, turn 7, getting into the slipstream of Shino. This is going to be ideal, as we'll probably then attack upon the left-hand side in a moment's time. Going to go under the bridge in a minute now. We're carrying a lot of speed. We're going to overtake them by the bridge. Break around the 200-meter mark. Could have probably braked a little bit later, but I'm happy to sit behind Rebecca Shino and just hold it back for a few laps or something. We'll wait for the opportunity to come up, I'm sure. But I was going to ask, yes, I think I did ask, actually, but uh, didn't really get to finish my sentence. In regards to shooting off to the front. Maybe I'll try and split it up every now and again. I'll do a race where I'll hold it back. I'll just take it steady. And then it makes the commentary more fun when I do that. Now when I just shoot off to the front and then don't really see any of the AI. It doesn't make the, in the commentary so much fun. And of course my fun is the commentating part anyway. So I, <laughs> I like commentating it and making it sound absolutely awesome. So that's my goal. That's why I enjoy doing it. But if you do want to see me just absolutely go for it and just leave the AI into the dust, then yeah, I can do that sometimes, if you want. But we'll sort it out as things go. Of course, the comment section 
down below is your best friend letting me know what you want me to do. Of course, any requests, let me know in there. You can even contact me in the Discord server as well, which the link is in the description. So, we are ahead of Rebecca Shino by four moments. Oh wait, something happened to her. I was just about to say she was four tenths and now she has completely disappeared from the graphic in the top left hand corner of the screen. And Paul O'Connor is in second place with a 1.5 second gap. So, yeah, it looks like we're going to be on our own on this one. Which I'm quite okay about. I don't think we need to uh, concern ourselves too much with the uh, the guys at the back, or at least the guys in the bottom spots of the podium. As we enter Lesmo 2. Very nice combination of corners, Lesmo 1 and 2. It's definitely the high point of Monza. The rest of it, of course, is a very straight and unentertaining track, I think. <laughs> I think a lot of people like this track. I've mentioned this many times before. That I'm just Yeah, Monza's okay. But... I don't know. If the AI was more competitive, then maybe Monza would be absolutely awesome. But I do know online, Monza is a great place to race online, so... Yes, I can't be harsh on the Italian track. Certainly not the best Italian track. I much prefer Mugello or Manzano. But still, very, very good. As we're going a little bit wider for the Carabolica. Not too bad, though. I thought uh, we would have been trying to get back into the Parabolica as we went over the green, but thankfully we didn't. We still managed to save the bike from going onto the green and off the track. Now we're just giving it everything we've got. Cool on the front. Somewhat cool on the rear tyre. It's not warmish, but it's somewhat optimal temperature, if you will. Braking about 200 metres. Using front brake. Didn't br didn't rear brake there. Didn't think we needed it for the very anti-del rectiflo. As we'll then hold it right. You can either hug into the apex and get near the wall, or you can sort of take an outside line, which will then throw you into the wall. Interesting sort of uh, tactics to use here in Monza, as we'll be breaking again around the 150 to 200 meter mark, breaking in, we're on it a little bit wide there, but thankfully with the little bit of trail breaking helped us get into that corner, we managed to slide the Aprilia into there as we go into Lesmo 1, as I say, best combination on the track, getting close towards the rumble strip here, getting breaking around the 100 meter mark, all you right, a little bit of a slide there on the rear tyre, but it's absolutely fine. We're in our element now, we're in the zone, we're pushing away from Paul O'Connor and Sarah Morrow. They're, they're not even worth mentioning, they're not even going to get close enough for us to have a lunge or anything like that. So of course, if you are a fan of the MotoGP Classic Championship that I did, it is I've finally come to an end, which is I am still very sad about, but we've had a magnificent finish. I'm not going to spoil the results just in case you didn't manage to see it, but I must say I'm so pleased to say that uh, we had a magnificent magnificent series. I really enjoyed it so thank you very much for everyone who did participate and comment and uh, enjoy the content. I'm hoping to do something similar to MotoGP 21 and I'm taking requests let's say from which rider we are going to use. Now my feeling is I want to use Wayne Gardner for the next Classic Championship but I'm happy to decide it amongst ourselves and figure out who we want to use. So let me know in the comment section down below if you have a preference on who you want me to use for the MotoGP Classic Championship. Of course, the MotoGP Career Mode will be occurring in MotoGP 21, and the Classic Championship, and whatever other features and sort of uh, races we can conjure up. I can't wait for MotoGP 21. At this point, it's about a week away, so it's getting very, very close. It might be two weeks away, actually. I don't remember when I'm going to upload this video. I'm trying to upload this in the past for today, which is then the future. It's, uh, it's a bit of a pain, actually, sometimes to record in the past, because of, of course I don't have the time to just record on the day and upload it, because when you're trying to upload in 4K, you need to give it a good couple of days for it to actually process in 4K, and sometimes I've given three a days, three, four days on the endurance video, and it still hasn't come up in 4K, it's just to put into context how much the uh, processing it takes. The rendering itself on my end is not so bad, I've gotten used to recording and rendering everything in 4K, so it's fine, but um the rendering itself is what takes so long, which I'm, I'm absolutely fine with. It just means that sometimes my commentary is a little bit out of date. So, for example, I think when the update hit quite a while ago, I'd done, like, five videos that week, and they were all out of date because the update completely changed everything. So, just to put in context, but just a quick mention, Paul O'Connor has disappeared from Sarah Morrow, and he is 1.6 seconds behind us. I do know that my uh, wrist is no longer in a fully back position, which is referring to full throttle. 
So maybe that's why Paul O'Connor is chasing us down. I've sort of taken a more of a relaxed approach now to this final lap, or at least to the penultimate lap. We did lose eight tenths of a second there, and Paul O'Connor is he's closing, but he's not closing it in rapid enough pace to say, let's be concerned, but at the same time, let's just keep that in the back of our minds, because you never know. One little mistake could mean Paul O'Connor is ready for battle. It's down to one second now, and I was quite gentle going into uh, turn two there, and turn one as well, we did break a little bit earlier. As we're holding it right, giving everything we've got on this Aprilia. I do love this bike. Major, major props to this one. If you haven't used it yet and you have the DLC, I implore you to use this bike because it's so good. And I really, really, really love the colour scheme. I think the idea with the purple, the whites, the black and the red, it just looks so good. It's a really appealing looking motorcycle. I think there's even little, little bits of green on there as well. But I don't think we need to concern ourselves with Paul O'Connor anymore because something's happened to him. Or I was just absolutely dominant going into those couple of corners. Because the gap is now about 1.8 seconds. So if you were expecting a wacky finish, I'm sad to say it's probably not going to happen. Of course, the last time we used this Aprilia it was in the French Riviera Battle, which was probably one of my most favourite races in Ride 4. Because before that, I was trying to hold back and wait for the uh, the opportunity to cut through each rider. But he was so fast, I can't remember who was fighting, it was a... Uh, Alexis something, uh, Alexis Geiger, I think that's the name of the Swiss rider that we were fighting and uh, it was he was really fast, he was extremely fast so it was awesome to finally have an, a competition and a serious challenge on Ride 4 I love it when the AI challenges us, can't wait for MotoGP 21, fingers crossed that is just a challenging or if not more but upon that note guys, this is going to be another Dot Race victory in classic style so guys Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.